And we should be going live. Looks like, yep, we just uh, started streaming. I should actually probably pause the video too. Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of HBit Gaming. Short for History Bit Gaming, it's where we go through all sorts of old retro consoles and uh, try to find our favorite games from them and just kind of take a trip back through history to see where video gaming came from compared to where it is currently. So today, in case the background screen couldn't, didn't tip you guys off, we're going to be playing some Sega Genesis. So we got a lot of votes for a lot of Sonic games and then a handful of other games, so we're going to break up the Sonic with the other games and we're going to get started right now. Come on. There we go. I like that little logo. That was cute. Yeah, I've always liked uh, the Sega logos. So, just a heads up, we, like I posted on Twitter, we are playing on uh, an at games version of like a re-release. So, I'm not entirely sure how 100% accurate this will be to the actual Sega Genesis hardware, but uh, Unfortunately, I could not get my actual Sega Genesis fixed up to the point where it recognized the controllers, so we're gonna have to make do with this. Right. It's still spin, I think. No? I guess they didn't add this charge up spin at this point. I think you can just kind of like move forward. Uh, so, yeah. Despite as, uh, as synonymous with Sega that Sonic became later on, directly you realize that this game was actually released in um, 1991, which it, the original Sega Genesis or Sega Master System released in Japan in 88, I think. Wow. And then in it, okay, what always confused me about Sonic this is going to be a little bit of a tangent. Um, what always confused me about Sonic. Is I grew up with uh, Nintendo as my main console. My, some of my friends had the Sega, but like in the Mario games, I don't know what to do. Oh uh, yeah, you can just <laughs> jump, and basically it's just. A I know game. none of the controls. Uh, I think basically any of the buttons are jump, <laughs> <laughs> and then just gotta pass off the controller without letting you get adjusted. Oops. Um. But yeah, it always it was a shock to me that Sonic could jump up and into enemies and not get hurt. Because he's got the spikes, whereas in Mario, if you jumped upwards into an enemy, it would be like, it's to death most of the time, or at least it you. So some background for me, I've never played anything by Sega before. I know very little about Sonic, and uh, all I know is he rolls in a circle. <laughs> he's gotta go fast. That's, that's another. I know Blaze. Ah, I lost all the rings. So if you uh, press down while you're running forwards, so that will do that little spin thing. And I think you you can kill enemies by doing that. You can also jump off of them or jump into them. Either basically. Oh. I don't know if that static in the background is supposed to be there or not, or if it's just the non-Sega console being stupid. No, I think it was because I was by water. Oh yeah, okay, that makes more sense. Well, it's like only when you stop moving. Oh, roll. So you can actually, um, if you get a, a, enough of a head start, you can just run directly up that. Uh, roll. Kind of like in uh, Super Mario World for uh, Super Nintendo, where if Mario has the... Oh, uh, I died. If Mario has the cape, he can run like directly up slopes like that and continue running. <laughs> how do you, um, like, how do you consistently roll in a circle? Uh, the, in later Sonic games, you could like hold down and press one of the buttons to kind of charge up a spin. But uh, for this, the only way to do it is by pressing down while you're already running forward. So if I'm over here and I want to run, 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 and then press down. 
Ah, oh, that's what I was trying to do. Okay. I think in this one you do kind of lose speed. I think that's more for attacking, which is weird to me because, like I said, in, I think from, starting from Sonic 2, you could do a charge up spin. I can't get up the wall! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, ready? More head that's start. That's one stubborn run, 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 ball! <laughs> you just heard my New York accent in, in that. <laughs> run, 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 down. There we go. I'm up. I did it. Yeah, um, so the Sega Genesis as we know it in North America released in 89, a year after it released in Japan as the Master System, and um, since Sonic wasn't around at that time, the first game that was actually packaged with the Sega Genesis... <laughs> I'm struggling so hard. <laughs> you got this. I believe in you. Because whenever I go down, I jump backwards. Yeah. I'm trying to jump forwards. Kind of, uh, what, if you get a head, enough of a head start, you'll see Sonic's feet kind of go into like a figure eight looking thing. And that no. means you're basically going as fast as you can. I hate the insta deaths in those pits, too. Um, but yeah, so the first game that came packaged in with Sega Genesis Systems was actually Alter Beast, which was an arcade port. And then there were a few other ones that also eventually came packed in with it before Sonic, but I forget exactly what one of those were. I like the theme song. Never understood why Sonic just like waggles his finger at you on the main screen. Is that continuous through all of the Sonic games? I think most of them. I feel like he always had that kind of attitude because Sega was trying to like differentiate him between uh, actually playing or is this a scene? Oh actually I thought I was playing but I'm totally <laughs> not playing. <laughs> I was gonna say wow I was like wow I'm doing really well totally was not playing. I was like I don't recognize that as the first stage is the ROM really that like weird. I'm just gonna run through as fast as I can. I think that noise in the background is just because of the faulty Stupid hardware. Stupid spikes! I hate the spikes. No! <laughs> that's, that's really cheap. It didn't even give you like the invincibility frames. What the hell? Run, Sonic, run! See, so yeah, after this, we can uh, check out Sonic 2. So I'll try with the actual cartridge first and see. Oh, yep, back works. here again. So I think both of the cartridges I have for Sonic. What are these? One and two. Uh, those are extra rings, and then that's like an invincibility. I think pits can still kill you, just like in Mario, and I'm not sure about spikes. I think you can. Whoa! Yeah. I don't know what I just did, but it was cool. I did it! Yay! So, this was one of the, ga the main games that Sega, I think, used in their blast processing marketing or whatever to show off how, like, oh, we can do more than Nintendo and how Sega do what Nintendo. Alright, after I die next time, we can switch games. <laughs> I think last processing was mostly just kind of like jargon to try to sell more systems. What is last processing? So that's actually a good thing. I should look that up, the exact definition for what it is, because I, I feel like it's an overly simplified term for some actual hardware stuff that's going on behind the scenes. Nice. I forgot about the chameleon guys. Ooh. Did, I, did yeah. I beat another level? Yeah. Where? See, it's just a matter of practice and getting used to like what the game wants you to do when it, in terms of like speed and momentum. Even though this was like one of the primary competitors to the Mario games, they handle extremely different. It's a very it's very different in general. Yeah. Like 
I mean, just looking at it, like the controllers to me are a lot stiffer. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I think, I don't know where I was going with that thought. Um, I think, like, comparing this to the NES so far, I already like this game better. Yeah. Like, it has a lot more elements to it. I mean, it was much newer, so, like, much more modern compared to the NES, so there obviously is going to be, like, a lot of advancements in the game, but, yeah, like, this is already cooler to me. Yeah, I think that's more I think that's primarily, like, why I've, I've always kind of associated the Sega Genesis with the Super Nintendo more, especially because I think that was a big push of their marketing. So I've kind of always compared it in my head to in Super Nintendo in terms of things. And then, so it's, it's a weird, like, in-between system where the initial controllers had three buttons and no triggers. Um, it's like a boss? Yeah, it's the first boss battle. I think you have to hit him three times? Maybe more. I lost all my rings! Yeah, if you can collect the rings, you can get hit again. That's the other thing that's kind of cool about this game compared to like the Super Mario ones, is uh, when you when you get hit, as long as you collect as many rings as you can, you'll have more of a buffer for if you get hit again. Hmm. Because you just drop the rings every time. As long as you have one ring, you won't die. When you, I also notice when you get hit, you don't like turn invisible for like two seconds. Mm -hmm. Normally, in the games that I've played in the past on the Nintendo systems, like if you get hit, you're like invincible for like two or three seconds, like to kind of give you a buffer, and then after yeah. that, like goes back to normal. Oh yeah, that's right. They introduced tail in this, tails in this one, which means you can play two players. Yeah, the invincibility frames seem to be kind of weird in the first Sonic. I'm not sure if that's the first Sonic itself, or if that's just, um, what we're playing it on. 1992. Uh, do you want to go Emerald Hill, Mystic Cave, Special Stage, or Casino Night Zone? I think it's Casino Night. Cool. So I guess... Yeah, on top screen and bottom. I forgot how smushed it got. Oh, yeah, oh boy. I, about those I don't two. like this split screen. Is this the first time split screen is introduced? Uh, into a Sonic game, yes. I'm not sure exactly about. I wonder what the first video game split screen was. Huh? You should look that up actually after we end up dying. I like how when Tails goes in the air, oh. it like. His, her? Her? I think tail? it's him. He's him. Miles. His tail just like floats like a little, it's, he turns into a ball and then he's just a little tail. It's yeah. kind of cute. I think if you hold down the jump button, you can fly too. As tails, or you can like hover at least. It's, it's like we're playing pinball and Sonic all at once. I know, I'm very confused. <laughs> yeah, they, okay, so Sonic 2 definitely had a lot of really interesting, um, interesting shapes you guys. Oh yeah, okay. So this is the first game in Sonic 2 where you can actually charge up your stick. Wow. You just hold down and tap any of the buttons repeatedly. Oh, the controls are different in this game. He can jump with A this time. Yeah, I Before think... Before it was B. So, um, uh, that's what's... I don't like always that. Always kind of confused me about, um, a lot of the Sega Genesis games, especially like Sonic and stuff like that. Is it should be standardized, but it's not. Yeah, and, and for a lot of early Sega Genesis games, almost all the buttons did the same exact thing. So like, I can hit any of the three buttons, and, and it's they all just jump. jump, and they all do the same exact thing. You're gonna have three buttons, which is you're obviously trying to have more buttons than the NES because I only had two, aside from the control pad and everything. Boing. Um, Boing. But if you're gonna have three buttons, why not? make use of them in your games. Yeah, why are you going to make them all the same thing? And then later later controllers, I think, had uh, the option of up to six buttons, but like there's a secondary there smaller one. And I think they actually might have done that to compete with uh, Super Nintendo's controllers, which had both the shoulder buttons, yeah. as well as four buttons on the face of the controller. So... 
feel like that's why Sega started putting out some of the controllers. I'm not completely sure about that, so don't necessarily quote me on that. Yeah, it would I make sense just... from a business standpoint to try to at least have the same amount of Rings. buttons on your controller as your competitor system. Oh, you finished? <laughs> I was just, I was exploring for a while. <laughs> I don't know how exactly I made my way here. I think there's definitely multiple paths around here. But one thing I will go, say go, 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 go. about Sonic games is they definitely had a very interesting level designs and they were very varied. Very intricate. Yeah. There's a lot of, uh, like, artistry in this. Oh, yeah, I forgot you can make Sonic headbang too. Also, I'm timed and I'm stuck. <laughs> Oh, I have 20 got... seconds, and I have seven, only seven rings, and I'm stuck. I think that's three minutes, and no. Yeah, like the time, it just, the music there got is. eerie. There it is. It's the same so, uh, song that plays when somebody's drowning in this game, too. Die. Oh. Time over. One player wins. Hey, I won something. I got an item box. I, think, I guess those are the ones that have like the shields and rings and stuff in them. Casino Night Zone 2. <laughs> you okay there? Almost dropped the controller on that one, <laughs> which would have been real bad. Because you can't really quite replace these anymore. Um, Why was Sonic just like... What, what it, uh, why? Well, okay, that's weird physics. I don't think physics really exists in video games very much. Uh, some of them. Some do games it like than to try. Yeah. But I feel like most of the time, physics. Hey, what's up? What's going on? Oh boy. Right. Like I mean, it kind of works with with them rolling. They're they're but... very stylized physics. Where like there's definitely momentum. But it's nowhere near what, like, actual, real-life physics would be. Whoa. What the heck was that? I don't know. Um. <laughs> but I just did something. <laughs> I heard a little chime. I just walked through a wall. <laughs> I don't know if that was supposed to happen or not, but I just went straight through a wall. Oh, come on. There we go. How do I get this, like, TV screen? Uh, jumping on it or spin dashing into it. I'm, I'm trying to jump on it and it ain't, it ain't Try. Oh well, bye bye. Oh my god, I'm stuck in the same thing again! <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah, look, what? it did again. What the heck? Oh, that, that item box teleported me to it. Hi there. Help! <laughs> There we go, I'm oh, up. No. I did it. Oh no. Oh, I have very oh. few rings. Wow. Sonic, cooperate, please. Ready? Sonic. Boing! Boing. No, it's not boinging. I'm stuck in this wall. Wall. New York. <laughs> I have two parents from one's from Brooklyn, one's from the Bronx. So. Oh, you gotta hold it. Oh, okay. I was like, why am I not going up? Yeah, but my ac my accent's a little a little weird. Cause I say certain words like North Jerseyans, and certain ones like South Jerseyans. Yeah. And it just I don't know. I never think of myself as having an accent until like all of a sudden it comes out really thick. If you go to another part of the country, we have accents. Oh yeah, definitely. Like the way I say coffee or dog. Coffee. Like, I say dog. I say dog a lot. I a lot can't. of dog. You want to get roll. aggravated, it comes out super hard. I thing. can't roll up the platform. <laughs> <laughs> this seems to be an ongoing trend. I'm not exactly sure where I'm supposed to go from here. Go, 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 let me jump. Oh, is this one of those levels where you have to actually get like a jackpot in that thing in order to get past through? Or do I just have to break these? I don't know. It's been so long since I played any of the Sonic games. They definitely hold up in terms of like... Yeah, you know, I haven't played since 91. I wasn't even born. I wasn't even a thought. <laughs> yeah, this place looks familiar. And Sonic's doing that slow crawl up again. That's weird. How do you... Oh, you have to pull down A. Ready? Boing! Oh, 
Did it. I found it. I made my way through. I have no idea how I did it. Oh my god. These look these reminds me of like half pipes. Yeah. That makes me want to play with Tony Hawk. <laughs> I have a Tony Hawk game for the Wii. I have Oh no, I don't. I have a Sean White game. Totally not Tony totally Hawk not games. correct. <laughs> it's snowboarding, so it's kinda similar. Not not completely, this, but this is wrong. <laughs> Uh, Here we go! Extreme sports, you got this! A fun game I have for the Wii is Guinness World Records. That's like, it's it's all just mini games. Look, I'm through a wall again! Oh yeah, there's some certain secret passages and stuff in some of the levels. And then, what's this? I think that is an elevator that you probably took up to get to that area. Ready? Here we go! What happened? I'm gonna die Can again. you fly if you hold down jump or? No. Indeed, you cannot. I guess that's probably in the third Sonic then, because I know. I feel like the third Sonic was more of a cooperative two player mode, where like Tails could actually carry Sonic and like float for a while. Mm hmm. Oh, weird. Bomb, bomb, bomb. The, the start button actually paused it instead of skipping forward to the screen. <laughs> That's why it stopped for a second. Oh well, we can we we completed Casino Night Zone. I guess that's why it allows you to choose stuff too, since it's two player verse. Wait a minute, is there a way? I guess you can't really go back. Uh, I guess for sake of time, since we have a good feel of Sonic 2 now, we want to move on to. Uh, Either Mortal Kombat 3 or Maximum Carnage? Let's do Mortal Kombat. Okay. So I think we had talked a little bit about Mortal Kombat in one of our past episodes. I don't remember if it was Atari or... Um, or if it was the NES. But it was the first Mortal Kombat that was the reason for the ESRB. Rating. The the ratings, the game ratings coming about. Oh yeah, this is rated mature, realistic blood and gore, realistic violence. See, I don't know how quite realistic, <laughs> realistic is considered in uh, in ninety one or ninety two, but yeah, I mean, especially for the time. Wait a minute. Okay, that's weird. So it says Mortal Kombat three on the game case, but apparently the game that's in there is actually Mortal Kombat two. That's okay. And hopefully it still works properly. Don't blow in the video game. Wrong. I'm trying to get it to plug in properly. Come on. Oh, this one's 1985. Come on, baby. Come on. You can do it. Mortal Kombat, I believe in you. I want to play a fighting game. If for some reason this doesn't work... Wait, I've totally played this in arcades. Is this the one that's from arcades? I think most of the Mortal Kombat's were in arcades first. Oh, I've yeah, totally to played this game. I think most of them were in arcades uh, before they got ported over to a bunch of the other systems. Because, like, I, I don't know if I said it last time on a live stream, but in my town we have, the, we have a free arcade, and I've definitely yeah. played this. I remember playing a lot of Mortal Kombat in... Um, it was a pizza place we used to go to all the time when I was a kid, and they had a few of the arcade systems set up in like the waiting area, along with like the the claw game, so that you could get stuff. Uh, you play like a, put a dollar in, and you have a chance to win prizes and stuff. Yeah. Um. Okay. Start. I think you press start, and it'll allow you. There we go. Uh -huh. Aw, oh, they're all- are they all men? Oh no, wait, that one looks like a girl. No, wow, two of them look like- is that a girl? Yeah, that's yeah. a girl. She's in- she's in like a leotard. And there's also this guy. I would be this one. Deformed and stuff. Do I have a fan? I just bowed. Sub-zero. Alright, give me like 10 One seconds to figure jump. to figure out these controls. Yeah, so you can jump. You I can walk backwards crouch. really creepily. I walk forwards really creepily by crossing my legs. I can kick. B kick. Okay, so start blocks. Why would you have start be as your a block control button? Because <laughs> well, there's no other buttons, so. so yeah. All right, so here, wait. Punch <laughs> kick. Don't kick me yet, kick. but look, look how creepily I walk. Da -na 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 -na. I 
just move you. I think uh, in this level you can like knock people off into the acid or onto the hooks. For, Is like... this the same thing where, like, depending on which way I'm facing, I can't punch in the other direction? Yeah, I, I don't think you can. So like, here you go. Oh, yeah, punch. Oh, wow, yeah. Look at that Real realistic, realistic blood, blood and gore. <laughs> Ow. I'm just gonna repeatedly punch you. <laughs> oh, I died already. <laughs> I forget all the fatalities. Apparently in the first Mortal Kombat, like, the fatalities were super hidden. Wait, what is C? Kick, punch. Are they both kick? Yeah, They're one's a kick. high kick, the other one's low kick. Low kick, high kick. I can never do a high kick in real life. Oof. I can knee you too. I'm trying to remember like the special moves. Ooh, I just nice jumped one. over you. What did you just do? I just froze <laughs> the ground. I thought you peed. <laughs> <laughs> finisher! I froze you, that was a lame finisher move. Are there like combined button moves? Like if I Yeah, I think so. So like, like if I click two of these at the same time? Yeah, I think A and B plus like multiple uh, directions huh. usually cool. or certain things. Uh, it changes based on the character too. If you press start, you can join in again, I think. Yeah, there we go. Player two has entered the tournament. I like this one. <laughs> this might be, this might win. <laughs> I'm gonna be this one now. This Great. bald man looks like a monster. I forget his name. Bakara. Baraka? Baraka, like Barack Obama. <laughs> no! Wait, what's my long distance attack? Uh, both of mine for Sub-Zero were like forward roll, down, then down and into forward, and then a, a button. Oh, I can duck. Oh, I can kick you in the air. Oh no, oh no! Hey! <laughs> oh shit, you have uh, like, like swords knives. that come out of your hands too. They look like, like machete kinda. I don't know what I just did, but <laughs> I did something. <laughs> <laughs> I just grabbed you. Stop throwing your like slime on me. Yeah, it's not very realistic lightning. Wait, hold on. Don't attack me yet. I don't think every single fighter has like long distance stuff. Oh, I have a knife. Ready? Knife. Oh, I dove. I dove instead of knifing. Oh, jeez. I don't know how I just. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> How's this time? I'm just fly. clicking buttons. <laughs> it's button mashing, yeah. Button mashing is my is my technique for these games. Get the hell away from me! Oh no, no, no! I don't know what the fatalities are for Baraka. So like, there's like, each character has special move combinations that you can like... I think mine was the knife. I'm gonna be you this... You like, literally like, rip them apart. This guy here looks like he's chilling, so I'm gonna be him now. Oh man, I should... Whoever ends up getting... The finish him start uh, thing. We should pause the game because I think we we'll pause it. Oh wait, no, you can't because he just froze me. Okay, this guy's like moves are really lame. He has like very. Johnny Cage. I think he's supposed to be an actor or something. At least in one. He's movie. quite lame. I like the guy with the knife sweater. <laughs> Let's see. Mortal fight. Dang it. Is there anything? I can still duck. I can still jump. Fatality. Ooh, I did a cool. Oh, I just did a front, a front flip. Kick. Uh, kick. She was gonna dodge. Ooh, that was a flexible kick. Whatever I just did. You're still gonna beat me. <laughs> I'm still gonna die. Oh no! Punch, 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 punch. Yeah, whoever gets uh, the finish view thing, finish him, we can uh, figure out what their fatality is to show off at least one. Oh, come on. Oh no. 
What am I supposed to do? All right. Um, oh no, where is it? Johnny Cage. Yeah. Oh, I just did nothing, and he just collapsed. Down, down, <laughs> forward, forward, left punch. What? All right. Mm -hmm. I like continuous spell with a K. Yeah, that's kind of their, their thing. Is uh, all their stuff is spelled with K's that should be spelled with K uh, C's. Uh... So is this the extent of the game? Because this is a much simpler game than compared to what we were just playing. Yeah, it 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 also has like the single player arcade mode where you just fight through multiple. My crazy walk. Oh, oh there's, there was totally a guy who just peeked out from behind that tree. Yeah. The trees have faces too, and they look weird. Why can I not throw my hat? I can usually do that. I'm not entirely sure we have access to all of the attacks, because I think we have, since we them? have the, the three-button controllers, I feel like if we had a six-button controller, it would actually have more punches and stuff. Because I know in arcades, usually it had like six buttons. I can do squats. I'm just going to do squats. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, <laughs> eight, nine, dance. ten, kick. Oh, that was a punch. Oh, <laughs> man, I backed up just in time. Look at all that blood. I don't think blood quite spews out of you like that in real in realism. Not, not in real life. Finish uh, her. And I just spin. Nope. Kung Lao. I totally have played this game. I know all these names. Now I'm a little hyped. <laughs> Alright, wanna do one more round of this and I guess yeah. we'll move on to Sonic 3. Alright, what we should do is look up the fatality for the characters we, we choose first. So yeah, this is like the arcade mode where I would basically have to fight my way up the tower through each of them. Alright, you press start. Join in. Where's knife guy? Which was the knife guy? Knife guy was in Baraka down here. This one? No, right next that to one. Yeah. That's the one I want to be. Okay, Scorpion, let's see. Up, up, high punch. Yeah, I think there should be like a high punch and a low punch, just like there's the high punch and the low kick. Or wait. But I think we only have punch. access to. The Whoa, high punch. look, I can dive in the air. <laughs> Whoa, Whoa, you just teleported. <laughs> I'm a ninja. Right, Wait, I on. just like did some weird like lower ground kick. <laughs> I don't quite understand. There should be, yeah, I'm pretty sure I don't have access to all my moves. Oh. Cause there should be a way to, look at my, how my torso is the only part of me that moves when I back up when I'm against the wall. What is that? What is, I'm like Elvis. Theoretically, down, down, up, up, high punch. Down, down, up, up, punch. That's good. Whoa, how do you teleport? Is that exclusively like your I think, thing? I think so. Oh no. Oh, I just threw you. There should be like a spear that I can like, or like a, a rope with a spike on the end that I can, oh man, that I can like ah, throw into you and be like, get over here. Mm. Drag you across the stage, but I think that requires a different punch. Here's two button mashing. Maybe you can hear. I'm gonna put it close to the microphone so you can hear my clicks. <laughs> no, no, no! Oh. Okay, what was it? Dang it. Down, down, up, a punch! Damn it. It wasn't quick enough. Oh well. You gotta be quicker than that! No fatalities, apparently. Not this time, at least. Alright. On to Sonic 3. If I can get this out of the... Don't break it! I got this. There we go. Man, really clips in there. I don't know why, for that game, the rest of them aren't like that. Alright, Sonic 3. I think we don't have the actual... We just have it on. Built into the system. All right, so while you start that up, we're going to delve into some history or awesome. fun facts. I don't know. I'm going to pick one. Oh, right. What was that question that we had earlier? Uh, 
What are we gonna look up? The I... wow, I have really bad memory. The first time that there was something. Oh, split screen in a video game. Okay, first. Time yeah. Was split my memory screen. is apparently only slightly better. All right, I do have another cartridge. There it is. I feel like there was other games that did it too before that, but oh come on. Oh, since Pong, apparently. Is that really split screen, though? I feel like it's the same the same screen. Yeah, you're on either side of it. But I feel like for split screen to be a thing, you need to be able to, like, walk away from the other person playing or move far enough away from the other person playing that you have your own specific view of the screen. I don't know. At Wikipedia says account. Pong, but I know what you mean. I feel like Pong, you're pretty much stationary within the confines of the game. You can't, like, just walk over to the side and... Aw, oh, Sonic 3, are you not going to work? Is that what you're telling me right now? Also, why am... Oh, I was caught on that. All right. I thought that Mortal Kombat was going to do this to me, too, so maybe I can get it to work. All right, well, let's delve into some history while we're having some uh, technical difficulties here. Oh, there we go. Yay. We can still delve into some uh, history, though. What do you have for us? Well, when my computer loads, we will have some interesting facts. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got this little cinematic. Tails flying a, a sonic plane, and then Sonic becoming supersonic. Oh man, it's Knuckles. I think this is the first time he actually showed up. Now, if I remember correctly, Sonic and Knuckles was actually like an expansion pack that you could plug into another cartridge or something. Or there was multi cartridge stacking capability for that. So I'm just going to read a quick blurb here. So, since, since the Sega system was supposed to go, like, head-to-head -head against NES, it was released to do so, mm. and it did really well in Europe, and it did really well in Brazil, but in US and Canada, it was always considered the poor man's NES. So like the not as cool Nintendo Entertainment System. Yeah. So like, people typically would prefer Nintendo over Sega, which is why, like, I guess I've never heard of it before this, or, um... Like, because most people know of NES and SNES and all things like that, but it typically is not heard of much anymore. Yeah, I mean, Sega also... Sega does, pl like, make games for Nintendo, though, don't they? Because I've they played Sonic now. games on Nintendo devices. I feel like Sega used to be a much bigger competitor, from, from what I remember of my childhood at least, a much bigger competitor to Nintendo back in the day. And then, uh, I remember, like, a lot of people getting into very heated debates of, like, between, over Sega or Nintendo. And, like between the Genesis and the, uh, what was it? Genesis and the Super Nintendo. There was also the, uh, I think it was the Sega Saturn that was out uh, around the same time as the N64. There was the Mega Drive too. The Mega Drive, I think that was the one. That was the first the, one. Uh, that was the very first one. And um, the Sega Dreamcast was kind of the same time period-ish as, uh, GameCube and PS2, maybe a little bit before GameCube. I don't remember the exact time period that Dreamcast was out, but the Dreamcast was Sega's last real system before they just started going into uh, software development for other companies. 
So, the Sega Genesis is the very first 16-bit console system. The graphics card itself was 16-bit, but the computer was still 8-bit. So it wasn't truly a 16-bit system, but it was the closest thing we had at the time to that. Yeah, I think the Super Nintendo overall had a better computer processor. I forgot you got like special things from uh, special abilities from the shields and stuff this time. I think the fire shield allows me to like uh, move forward. Tails, why are you just walking to the side of the screen like that? Like, one thing that? I noticed with these Sonic games is we just played the first one and we played the second one and the third one and they all look graphically the same. Like yeah. the score, the time, and the rings are all in the same place. The graphics don't seem to have gotten any better. They more look like they just made more levels. Yeah, they kept them pretty. It doesn't seem like it got more advanced. And similar. Um, I do know certain later ones they did start kind of increasing the graphics. And I think even with this one, some of the reflections and like textures are slightly better, but it's hard to see because of how stretched it is. Like if it was in HD, I feel like we'd be able to see the differences in the sprite work a little bit better than we currently can. Dang it. Forgot that those things didn't. It's also kind of weird that that stage was just 3D and the other ones are 2D. Yeah, the uh, bonus stages are like 3D in, in this one, which I, I don't remember if this came out before or after Sonic 3D Blast. If you want to check that out actually real quick. Actually, he is 3D here. Like, it's definitely like 2.5D, I feel like. It's like... Compared to like some of the other ones, but... I think also in single player mode, uh, the second controller can still take control of tails and make him fly around and stuff and do things, but you don't have to worry about dying. Um, and then there's like a competitive mode, which is like races. So, some more background. I'm trying to think of a good place to start. So, Sonic was their game to really combat Super Mario Bros. And when Sonic came out, it actually did do that for a time. It was feeding out Super Mario Bros. But then. Eventually, Nintendo released their first 16-bit system, which was the Super Nintendo, so the SNES. And that ended up toppling over the Genesis and Sonic sales and quickly surpassed them pretty, pretty well. Which kind of sucks. I feel bad for Sega. Yeah, I feel they're, like, they're really trying. I feel like, especially with the Dreamcast, like, they could have done so much better. What really killed the system, I think, was a lack of proper anti-piracy measures and like how easy the games were to, uh, to pirate and like get free copies of. This is, there's a fact that I read about the Sega Genesis that it's one of the few systems of the older generation that people still make modern games for. Yeah, they're They make nowadays. like modified versions of the games. Yeah, especially nowadays there's been a lot more uh, people getting into like the homebrew scene for retro systems, especially now that a lot of the emulators have kind of helped people be able to understand how the older systems worked and how to code better for them. Mm -hmm. Wow, look at that slowdown, jeez. So it, it is really cool to see some like the, uh, the ways people are trying to revitalize old old school gaming with new content like that. Uh, oh no. Okay. Ooh, a cool Sega fact. The Dreamcast was the first console ever to have built in a built-in modem for online gameplay. 
So that was kind of the pilot for all the systems now, like Xbox, PlayStation, Wii, everything that has the online component to it, which is basically ubiquitous with like analog sticks and everything like that that we have. Yeah. Um, did they act, did they have like online gaming itself, like multiplayer online gaming, or was it more of like a game download subscription service? Because I know I think the NES also actually had uh, the ability to download games and stuff. Like, yeah, it was mostly just to download games. Yeah. And then I know Nintendo also tried with uh, the Super Nintendo again themselves. Uh, to have like a, not a subscription service, but to have online connectability. It, it, it really is amazing to think about how much some of the older systems really tried to push the boundaries of gaming too, and the technology just wasn't quite there yet, enough for it to actually work fully. But like, they still tried, which you definitely gotta respect. I like the way this is written. So it's about, um, it's a quote from a book, and it says, Nintendo had decided to flex some of its muscle on retailers as a response to the growing threat of Sega Genesis. With the NES still a huge seller and bringing in big bucks for any stores that sold it and its games, Nintendo was in a position to threaten stores with pulling the NES if they didn't do what Nintendo wanted. <laughs> so in that case, their thing was, hey, don't stock the Genesis, or we won't stock the NES. So, wow. yeah, <laughs> they were a threat. I forgot how, just how much of a rivalry there really was between Nintendo and Sega, especially at the time. You just lost Tails. <laughs> He'll come back, he'll be fine, he can fly, see? Oh look, he hovers with his tail, it's so cute. Yeah. Head bang a little bit, there you go. Ow. Yeah, Nintendo stalled the Genesis's debut in Walmart and other like major store chains because they just kept threatening them to pull their products out of stores and they were making so much money that the stores listened. Yeah. Wow. It's funny because you think of Nintendo as being like this big like happy family friendly kind of company. But, oh like, no. They, they are still pretty ruthless when it comes to the business tactics. Especially even like nowadays, where they'll like almost fall, like make false uh, shortages of systems. Like when they did the uh, NES Classic and Super Nintendo Classic re-release thing, uh, they made so few of them, so like the prices would stay pretty consistently. Oh, there goes Tails again. Um, pretty consistently high, and like there a lot of people started trying to scalp them because of that, like where they would just buy a bunch to resell yeah. and jack up the prices just because there weren't enough available in the stores for everybody that wanted them. Oh no. Oh, I don't like that sound. Come on. I've oh, never no. heard scalping of video games before. I've scalped like concert tickets before, Where is that? but never, uh, never video games. I haven't heard of that. Yeah. Maybe that's my next business. I'm gonna go and buy all the newest games at GameStop. Or online. Especially, it's, it's kind of hard to tell exactly which ones are gonna do well enough to like, collect them to the point where... Where they would be worth buddy. Yeah. And like, uh, one of the, the highest... This doesn't really have anything to do with uh, Sega Genesis, but it's kind of related to Nintendo. One of the highest priced GameCube games is actually a game called Cubivore because they sold so few of them and you would never have like expected at the time that that would be one of the games that ended up being worth so much money but like I think it's worth at least like a hundred dollars now or something if not more because of how rare they are it's because they didn't make enough of them because there wasn't that huge of a demand I think I'm gonna basically go through this level and then we can move on to the next game. I guess would technically be Sonic and Knuckles. Oh yeah, actually, check out Sonic and Knuckles and 
find some information on uh, on the whole like cartridge connectability thing. I never really owned a Sega Genesis myself when I was younger. Like I said, I always was kind of in the Nintendo camp of things because my first system I ever got was a Super Nintendo. And, uh, I played some of it at friends' houses and stuff, but... That bubble underwater? Come on, get out of here. Okay. Unfortunately, I don't know too, too much about... Sega, especially compared to like what I know about Nintendo. Oh, I need air. I need air. I'm gonna die. Oh no, come on. I'm gonna die. Sonic, no! I hate that noise so much, it makes me so anxious. Come on, bubble! Air bubble! No! No! I like the way it they was die. Right there after I <laughs> he just goes, ah! Right after I died. Uh, Alright, I think I have one last life. So I might as well try to make it through real quick while you look into the Sonic and Knuckles. What am I looking up exactly? Uh, look up like... There should be like... The, uh, the cartridges should like basically stack or something. Stack? Yeah, so like you would plug, kind of like with the Game Gear or uh, the Game Genie, you would kind of have the one cartridge that then another cartridge would plug into. Huh. And I think Sonic and Knuckles was one of those games that had that it was like a um, expansion pack more than a standalone game. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Piranha, what are you doing? I'm gonna look that up because that's interesting to me. Okay, jump there we go. Oh no. So the game basically flips open and allows you to connect another Sega Mega Drive, or in the US the Genesis, cartridge to top it off. It's kind of weird looking. Yeah. Makes the game cartridge larger than the Genesis itself. <laughs> One thing that I always wanted to have, but I never got because they never released it here, is actually for the uh, N64, the disk drive, but we can talk about that more once we actually get the N64 uh, episode. I just, I, I have a, a soft spot for all those like weird expansion things that never really caught on that well, like, especially in the terms of retro games and stuff. Come on, come on, there we go, there we go, oh, too close, too close. So it says the lock-on technology was actually a way of making up for the fact that the developers could not meet the deadline for Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Sonic 3 was supposed to be released with Knuckles as a playable character, and with all the Sonic and Knuckles levels yeah. playable, but time constraints forced the game to be split into two, and Sonic 3 was released while work continued on the uncompleted ones. And you can also lock on with Sonic the Hedgehog 2 and Sonic the Hedgehog for hidden levels. That's right, yeah. So, I remember Sonic and Knuckles, like, introducing Knuckles as a playable character, but it makes sense that it was basically the expansion to Sonic 3. And then it says when a non-Sonic game is plugged in to Sonic the Hedgehog 3, the result is a single stage of Blue Sphere produced randomly from information in the inserted cartridge's ROM header. Oh. That's cool. I- oh, oh no! Oh my god, this the wall! No, this is not good! Oh. You died. Game over. Rest in peace. Uh, Tails is just pad doggy paddling away. <laughs> just chilling. It's like, yeah, it's with over. Sega! Uh. Um... 
Yeah, I've seen like meme pictures of uh, a setup of the, the original Sega Genesis with the, uh, there was the expansion for the Sega Genesis 2, the, uh, I forget what it was called, damn. Oh man, there. Yeah, it wasn't a cartridge, but it was another thing that plugged into the top of the Sega and like expanded it. I don't think it was disc based, but I could be wrong about that. But um, what should we play now? Uh, well, we, we have Sonic and Knuckles, which I guess that makes the most logical sense to go into next, just because it is the expansion to Sonic Three, technically. Play like a handful of levels with this so that we can take a break from Sonic and do Spider-Man. Okay. And then that should bring us to our end of the episode. I think so. Sweet. Oh, might as well play as Knuckles. But yeah, I've seen like a meme picture of uh, an, an old school Sega Genesis with the expansion on it and then like five copies of Sonic and Knuckles just plugged into each other, stacked up like into this <laughs> unholy abomination. When did the the uh, I don't know what the name of the character is the pink looking Sonic. When did that? Oh, this is Knuckles. Yeah. No, there's a. Uh, oh, Blaze. Amy Rose? Or no, there's Giz. There's Blaze the cat. Oh, it's totally there's, cat. Uh, <laughs> Blaze. When did Blaze come? I think that was GameCube or maybe Dreamcast era. Actually, here since I just played a whole bunch of Sonic. I will attempt. Three. You get to play with Knuckles. He can glide if you double like if you tap the the jump button again while you're in the air, he can kinda of glide forward. Ooh, I climb just on walls. Stuck onto a tree. Yeah, you can climb on walls as him. So if you go to the right, you can climb straight up that. I don't think you can punch in this one. I think it's just jumps Wait, and stuff. How do I how do I stick onto the tree again? Oh, okay. I want to jump and stick onto that one. Yeah. Now I jump and go here. Ah! Actually, while you're playing too, I can look up yeah. random Whoop. stuff. Whoop. Whoa. Whoop. Whoa. Whoop. I like that. I like that noise. Whoop. Whoa. Whoa, I just swung on a pole. Pole dance and knuckles. I do like the sound effects in these games a lot. They're very, very How do stand I get up out there? a lot. Oh, I'm supposed to jump onto the wall. Yeah. I keep forgetting that that's a thing. Right, okay, that's what I was thinking of. So the expansion thing for the Sega Genesis is the 32X, uh, or 32X, I think which basically was an expansion that allowed, it was still cartridge based if I remember correctly. Oh wow, and they had a Sega CD, of course. How could I forget that? But yeah, there was the 32X that plugged into the cartridge port of the Sega. And then there was the, um, the Sega CD, which basically plugged in on the side. And you could like make this monstrosity, like Frankenstein's monster of Sega consoles. But yeah, I think that was their attempt to basically boost the power of the system to like 32-bit and allow for more competition with the later Nintendo systems and also the PlayStation 1. Because the PlayStation 1 was like one of the earlier, um, if not the first CD based. Stop throwing me off the platform! I think the Philips CDI might have come out before the PlayStation 1, though, actually. What is that? That is. quite. Stop annoying. throwing me off the platform! <laughs> Got that mushroom straight to the face. What is that supposed to be for? Oh, wait! Okay. So jump on that one and wait until the other one falls and maybe it'll fling you up. So then, now that that, oh. yeah, oh, there you go. Oh, okay, that makes more sense. Physics. 
No, I'm just gonna run. I just, I don't have enough time. Philip CDI. Wow, it looks so old. It looks like a VCR. It came out in 1991. Whoa, what's attached 1998. to 1998. Oh, I think it's like a vine or something. I can't get out of it. Uh, try pressing down and then try to like, spin. Yeah. There we go. Nice. And the CDI was 1991. PlayStation 1 was, I think, a little bit after that. I'm invincible! How do I charge up again? Uh, you hit down while you're not moving anywhere and then uh, up press any of the jump buttons, and you can like press it repeatedly to charge it up more. Yeah, okay, PlayStation was 94, at least in America. So that was three years after the Philips CDI, so the CDI, I guess, was the, technically the first CD-based gaming systems, which it didn't do very well. Um, Obviously, I've never heard of it. <laughs> yeah, uh, if you've ever seen any of like the the weird videos from like the really weird-looking Zelda games, there was I think three Zelda games made for it. There was uh, one Super Mario game, technically, I guess. It was. Uh -oh. uh, his uh, Mario Hotel, or Hotel Mario, I think is what it's called. But it had, like, I think a keyboard you could play with, and... Like a fly. How do I... And you have to hit him on my rings. above. So I think if you hit the fire that's below him, it hurts you. Yeah, I had no idea what uh, I was doing there. I think... You're doing a decent amount of damage to him, but it's hard to hit him without getting hurt, too. This song reminds me of something, too. Dead. Alright, I give up. You do it. <laughs> yeah, it took a log to the face. It's gotta hurt. All right. Yeah, okay, the fire hits you. So you gotta wait till it's low enough. Ow! Get out of here with that log! Shit. Ah! That's what I was trying to do before and I got hit with the log. Yeah, so you gotta basically just try to time it when the logs and whatever those canisters you're throwing out right now don't hit you. So right. well. I like that even better than the GameCube intro. <laughs> I don't know, GameCube one's a pretty, pretty classic for me. Alright, on to Spider-Man. Don't remember if this is two player or not, but we'll find out soon enough. One thing I don't really like about this is it has the cartridge slot, but it doesn't really fit as well as the actual Sega Genesis, which is unfortunate. There we go. That's, you can go on for about an hour. All right. Play this. Oh, this is LJN. They were pretty notorious for bad games. I don't think every single game they did was bad, but they had a lot of really trash ones. Action 50, I think, is one of the ones they did, which actually feature, it's like one of the earlier like collection of just a bunch of like shovelware games on one cartridge. And one of the games on it wasn't even finished. I think it might have been actually Action 51. Future of Black. Action 52. Yeah, I think it's actually Action 52. <laughs> yeah, and then it, it actually had a uh, game called The Cheetah Men that you couldn't finish. Like, 
literally was like needed to be patched before it was fully functional, which back then they couldn't really patch games because they were cartridge based. Mm -hmm. They didn't really have the internet speeds to send out patches to everything or the capability on a lot of the machines, at least the infrastructure for it. Alright. Oh man, look at these cinematics. I do kind of like how they're like uh, comic book styled. That was probably like the, the goal. The different comic book panels, like. Carnage. You should never trust a raving lunatic. Life lessons. Life lessons. The ultimate insanity. Carnage. Alright. Spoiler man. Interesting moving background there. Oh, interesting. Let's run to the bathroom. All right. Oh, you can climb on this? Why are these guys wearing like... Oh, they have weird hair, that's why. It looks like they were wearing crowns or not. Pretty standard beat em up. Why is this random guy in sunglasses trying to attack me? Oh, right, okay. You can swing. Can you. Yeah, okay, you can kind of swing into them to hit them. Start actually pauses in this game, so that's good. Can I climb upwards? I don't think I can. I like, <laughs> I like how each of the enemies had just like random names, like Steve and Marshall, and Danny. Tom. <laughs> Get over here, Tom. Oh yeah, look at that shimmy on the wall too. Yeah, your Mark. Brett. Malcolm? <laughs> Why Malcolm? I feel bad beating all these people up. They probably have families. There's also a lot of Malcolms, apparently. Take that, Paul. Billy. Quite a few Alex's as well. Jeff. Oh, how did I do that kick thing? Right. Alamo? What the heck kind of name is Alamo? <laughs> I like, I like how all the characters have like pretty much normal names, except for every once in a while there's like, some guy named Kin. I have Alamo. returned. Oh. These are the ones that actually dodge Lizzie and Dana. Pretty standard beat them up. I do like how you can actually like swing around and... Pow, pow. Kaboom. 
These guys are... These two have lots of health. I wonder if they're basically the mini-bosses for this level. Oh no, Spider-Man. They're both named Dana? That one's Dana, that one's Lizzie. We've beaten up a Steve and a Mark and a... And then Mike. an Alamo. And then Alamo comes out of nowhere. Some guy named Kin. And then it goes back to like Brett. You got Dana. There we go. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Animations are a little janky, but it's so far it's fun to play. You can kind of like scorpion them over to you. Get over here. Some of the web attacks are kind of context sensitive, it seems like, but I can't quite figure out exactly what the context is. Fighting accuracy, 62. Climb, let's go. So now that we're on our last game, what was your favorite one of today? Ah, uh, I, I, I oh, damn it. Um, good question. I mean, we we did play a whole lot of Sonic games. Damn it. Well, this one was pretty good until it got to this point where it decided to just get really hard for no reason. Come on, come, come on. No. Because I definitely, I like Mortal Kombat the best for its simplicity, yeah. yet I thought it was really fun. Yeah, I think Mortal Kombat's definitely one of my, one of my top games. Um, I do really enjoy Sonic 3 and Sonic and & Knuckles. I kind of want to treat them as the same, like, as the same game in a way. You because can, because they could be locked on, so... Uh, I think overall, out of like all the, the Sega games I've played in the past, come on, there we go. Um, including ones that we didn't play today, I really do like Altered Beast a lot. No, 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 no. Altered Beast is definitely a good one. It's one of the classic older ones, but oh no, no, no! I'm so glad I managed to land on that. Come on. Okay, come on. There we go. No? Where's that ledge? Um, I'm gonna end up dying. That's not good. Oh Any games we didn't play that you like typically better? Uh, I think Altered Beast is definitely up there. Uh, I'm trying to remember other ones. Street Fighter is. Street Fighter 2, that whole series is definitely a classic. Um, I really like Streets of Rage. Like, I really enjoy the Streets of Rage uh, series as well. So, I think I'm probably going to go with... Altered Beast as my number one. Mortal Kombat as a series, number two. And Streets of Rage as number three for my top three games. There we go. But out of the ones we played tonight, probably have to put uh, maybe Sonic 3 and Sonic and Knuckles at number one, Mortal Kombat still at number two, and I guess Spider-Man at uh, number three. It feels kind of cheap putting like multiple Sonic games in the top three out of the ones we've played. Beat up Alex and Steve on the streets. Another one actually that I completely forgot about that I think I want to change my to add to one of my top three games. It's kind of a cult classic, uh, Echo the Dolphin, in that whole series. What is that? It's a uh, 
<laughs> game where you play a dolphin and in the intro cutscene, all the wildlife in the ocean gets like abducted by aliens and sucked up into the sky. That is and weird. You have to like go on a journey to save them all. It's 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 very trippy and it's a overall weird game, but that's part of why I like it so much. It's just it makes so much nonsense that I, I can't help but appreciate that. Plus you get to swim around as a dolphin underwater and eat fish and stuff like that to heal. That's cool. Just, like, ram into you, your enemies. I don't know what I just did. I just like spun in the air and it was pretty cool. Get out of here. I'm just gonna punch them all. Punch them all. So I think my new top three is gonna be Altered Beast at number one, Echo the Dolphin at number two, and then Mortal Kombat at number three. Actually, this might be number two now for me. I liked Mortal Kombat the best, and then I didn't really like the Sonic games. I found them difficult. I feel like the Sonic games, you definitely need to have like that kind of mentality of high speed action and like. I feel like I definitely like the Sonic games as they went on in time a little bit better. Like they started to handle a yeah, little bit better. Yeah, I like the modern, modern case Sonic games, but certain, certain, like it's weird. They kind of, I feel like for me, they reached their peak at like a certain point earlier on, and then they were pretty good, and then they kind of like went downhill. Some of the newer ones have been really good, especially when they kind of went back to basics. Like, I think Sonic Mania had, like, uh, it was almost like a remaster of a lot of the old school Sonic gameplay. But, like, I did really enjoy Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, which we'll be looking at in our GameCube episode later on. I feel like that's one of my favorite 3D Sonic games, but I do really enjoy Sonic 3 slash Sonic and Knuckles uh, for the 2D Sonic experience. I like how they're fighting in like robes. Yeah. They look like robes to me. The random, the, some of the random people have like, uh, oh, here they come. Like bat, baseball hats and things like that. Like very eclectic enemies. A lot of them probably have families that they have to go home to and you just beat them up. It like, looks like such just, like normal everyday citizens on the street. And then there's like these two that look like they should be either from Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter. I don't like that they both come at you from different sides because before I was yeah. able to like fight half of them and then fight the other half and like now I can't do that. Yeah, and then uh, you can also web them up. Just How do you can, do that? Um, oh wow. Yeah, the third one. And then if you hit up and use the web at the same time, it kind of like makes you swing I think a little bit. I think I killed the other one. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think it's just Lizzie left. Screen. I like how tough he walks. Yeah. I like how he like he puts his one fist on his like pecs. His abs right as he punches. I win. Alright, let's end there. Let's end to the high note again. Yay! With Spider-Man swinging across. Alright, well. That's about every all the time we have tonight, guys. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, you heard what our top favorite Sega Genesis games were. So make sure you leave your own down below in the comments. Um, in the description, there is a survey for next episode. We'll be checking out the Super Nintendo and all a bunch of the classic games for that. So make sure you vote in the poll to let us know exactly which Super Nintendo games you want to see us play. And tune in next Friday around the same time, 5 p.m. Eastern or so. And we will catch you then. Peace out. Nice jams at the end there, too. <laughs> Bye, guys.